Hey, what is going on guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the first generation Apple TV running macOS 10.5 Leopard. Let's begin. So I just plugged in the Apple TV and we're having an amber light flashing over here. Now the screen just turned on, so we'll just look at that. And we have the Apple logo, which means all is well. This is not the regular Apple TV startup logo. And we also have the spinning wheel over here. So we'll just let that load for a few seconds and then we'll look at the desktop. So now that the desktop has loaded, we can go into Finder and about this Mac. And you'll find that it's known as iDenev version 10.5.5. One gigahertz unknown. That's actually supposed to be an Intel Pentium M, which is the Apple TV's processor and it's a single core. And we also have 256 megabytes of onboard DDR2 SD RAM. So it's already soldered into the motherboard. You can't upgrade or take it out. Now, if we click on more info, like I said, there's only one core and it's one gigahertz. And the processor name is just known as Genuine Intel Processor. And the bus speed is 400 megahertz, or so it says. The memory, there's only one onboard bank that's being used for the DDR2 SD RAM. So we can close that. And we have this video over here, which we're just gonna open. The fact that graphics acceleration is disabled means this is how good the refresh rate is. Not so good, is it? The next thing we're gonna look at is the Finder. So if we click on Finder, we have our main directory and our hard drive name is known as OS Boot. So that's generally the Apple TV's partition name, which is used to boot into the Apple TV OS. If we go into applications, we have Boot X Changer, which is used to change the Apple logo on startup. Carbon Copy Cloner, which I actually used to install this version of Leopard. I just transferred it from another drive, booted off a USB stick on the Apple TV and then transferred it into the Apple TV's HD. We have Chess, which actually doesn't open. Let's open up the calculator. And this is what we just get. We can open up the dashboard. And this is all the dashboard widgets we get, such as clock, date, and weather. And another calculator. And if we click on here, we can add some additional widgets, such as iTunes, if we wanted to. Then we have our DVD player. We can't use that because there's no DVD. Expose. We only have one window open, so. We have front row, which doesn't work because of the lack of graphics acceleration once again. And we have several Hackintosh based apps over here, such as VLC. And some of the x86 tools. Then we have image capture, iTunes. There's actually no audio driver on this version of iTunes or for the OS in general. So what we're gonna do is actually open it up. I'm gonna click cancel. And we're gonna find an audio file to play. We're actually gonna go find a 10.5 Leopard intro video. Looks like the classic visualizer works to an extent, even though it's not actually playing any music. Looks like it's lagging out a bit. But that's some interesting stuff over here. I didn't expect the classic visualizer to actually work. So that's enough for that. I'm gonna go back into applications. We have photo booth preview. So if we go into pictures, we can open up this big Sir wallpaper. And 
and as you can see, it works, it gets the job done. Then we have Safari, which actually does work to an extent because this version of macOS does support Wi-Fi. We have Stickies, which we can just use over here. And we also have text edit that works and utilities. So we have plenty of utilities such as, let's look at the activity monitor to see how much is actually used. System memory, only 32 megabytes available, 115 megabytes used and 53 megabytes inactive and overall used 219 megabytes. So Leopard's really taking a beating on this one. This is not supposed to run on anything below one gigabyte, I think, or 512. But 256 megabytes, that's already amazing. And we also have our disk usage. 6.75 gigabytes used, 30.1 gigabytes free. This is supposed to be a 40 gigabyte hard disk. And right now, the system process has not been used that much, but if we reopen this intro video and just play it in the background, now the CPU is going up to the users using 93%. Hold on a second. Looks like the graphics is a bit better now compared to what it was in full screen. Looks like it's better in a window than actually is in full screen. And look at this CPU usage. Literally reached the absolute maximum by the user. And now it's gone back to its minimum. So I guess that's it. This was Mac OS X Leopard running on a first generation Apple TV. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you all for watching and see you all in my next video.